everyone, uh, Glenn Sanford here, and uh, you're listening to the Expansion Podcast, where we're, we talk about personal and professional development, as well as production, team building, and all things real estate. Uh, and today, I'm uh, excited to talk with uh, Amy B. out of uh, Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, and uh, welcome, Amy. Thanks for having me, Glenn. I'm so excited to be here. Uh, you may not remember this, but we met in Fort Lauderdale, I think in 2017 at one of the first EXP cons. Okay. Yeah, we were there on the beach at the Marriott. So that was a that was a fun that was a fun EXP con back in the day. And of course we're coming back to to South Florida this year again for in Miami. So this can be, it would be good to catch up again if uh if uh if you're there. I'm, I mean obviously yeah. there's a lot of people that come up and say hi, but come up and say hi. I'll try Absolutely. to connect with all the dots. So, um, so you've been, you've been, uh, you know, kind of, kind of at this game of real estate. Um, I've been a, about, I think I'm coming up on 22 years next month, but you've been in the business. It's a little shorter than that time frame. but um, maybe just what's your background? How'd you get in real estate? Um, and, and, and then maybe we'll even ask the, the, the obvious question is why, why EXP? Why, why did you join back in, 2017. Yeah. Um, so I am a salesperson at heart. I won in the second grade the most cookie sales for the Girl Scouts. And ever since then, I've been selling things. Um, in, in college, I sold advertising for the school newspaper. Um, and I sold Tiffany lamps and leather jackets and all kinds of things. And after graduating from college with two degrees that can't really do anything with, um, I strategically chose communications and psychology, knowing that I would go into sales, just didn't know what kind of sales I was going to go into. And those were unbelievably valuable. Um, I started software sales and I moved to copiers and fax machines. Then I went uh, very quickly to cardiovascular medication. Um, and from there, I was hitting a glass ceiling real hard with my head. And uh, my mom actually had been, has, is still a real estate agent. And she said to me, you were working so hard. I was getting up at four o'clock in the morning so that I could go see doctors um, early and just working until late at night. And she was like, if you sold real estate, it you would make more money for less um, less time, and you would really make um, an impact and have have the flexibility and the freedom that you need. And I was being micromanaged, and I am a true entrepreneur at heart. So it just didn't work for me. I learned it so much in traditional sales and in traditional companies, and I learned enough to know I don't want to have to go there again. Um, so I am a real estate agent since 2025 or 2005. Um, I started with Remax, moved to Keller Williams, and now um, I was actually the first agent to begin selling real estate for EXP in Cincinnati in 2017. Oh wow! So I'm curious. Thinking back to your was it Girl Scout cookies? Was that what it was? So, so what was what was your secret to selling the most cookies? So, what's ironic about that is I believe it. My core, I'm a connector. I like to connect people and opportunities, and I do that every day, and that's what gets me so excited. Um, I was able to. My mom showed me the way. I mean, obviously, I'm seven years old at this point, but she said. I work at this company where they serve snacks. Let's talk to the owner of this company and see if we can get them to agree to buy these Girl Scout cookies and serve them as snacks for this business. And so we were able to do that on a large scale. And that's the lion's share of what got me that award. But there were a lot of other what I call nickel and diming that I did to kind of put myself over the edge. Okay. Okay. So in, in other words, think strategically about what it was you're doing um, as opposed to just knock on more doors than anybody else, N more knock on the right doors. Or as uh, yes. I think Joe Girard, the, 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 uh, sale, the, the, the car salesman who sort of set the record, 
you sold them in bunches like bananas. <laughs> yes. Th thanks so. for work smart, not hard. I mean, I also work hard, obviously, but I'm working smart. I'm being strategic and as efficient as possible. And I've continued to do that. So um, that being said, so the um, uh, when we start to think about um, strategic, uh, you, you obviously uh, have been building your business. Are there some unique things that you're doing in your business to give you, uh, we'll call it a strategic advantage in the market to, to generate the business that you're, you're generating? Yeah, um, so a lot's changed since COVID. My core business before COVID was families moving up in the same community and COVID kind of stopped that from happening. And then the interest rates really like shut it down. So I had to adapt my, my core uh, business model and my core people that I was going after. So during or after COVID, once it started, started opening up, I decided to become more involved in my community. And a lot of people shy away from that. Um, I dug really deep in. I started helping with a school levy campaign. Um, I started helping local politicians run for re-election and run for election and things like that. And that just engaged me so deeply. And it, it forced me to meet so many new people in my same community. I live in a township. Um, and I just dug in real deep in that township. And I believe that the, the success that I'm having is because I've chosen to be hyper local, meaning focusing very specifically on Anderson Township. Um, that also means sometimes saying no to things that don't fit in Anderson Township or don't fit my model or my focus so that I can be available and ready for things that do fit my focus. And I moved here 12 years ago. And as of 2023, the end of the year, I was the number one individual agent in Anderson Township. Um, other people sold more than me, but they had teams of a dozen people, right? So um, I've made a quick impact. And I found that when you volunteer your time for community efforts, people see your passion, your professionalism, you're responsible, you show up, you do what you say you're going to do. And that really goes a long way. And then they start to say, oh, Amy's our realtor. Amy's the realtor for our group or Amy, you know, is the one call Amy. And that literally just kind of exploded my business in Anderson by just getting involved in the community and different things. Oh, awesome. Um, now, are you now? You, it sounds like you do a lot of personal networking um, in Anderson County. Are you use Are you doing much uh, with uh, other lead gen, social media, those types of things, or is it primarily sort of in community activities? Um, I think we do our best connecting and engaging, uh, collaboration face to face, belly to belly. Uh, nose to nose. And that's where I found the most success, just creating relationships with people and continuing those relationships. Um, unpopular opinion. There's a lot of fakeness and toxicity on Facebook, which I choose not to uh, participate in. And I think it wastes a lot of time. And I think the most successful people um, have meaningful relationships in real life. And that's where I've been able to grow my business the most and the most impactfully and be able to create that rapport. Um, so I am very involved in uh, the schools and with the sports and all of those things. And, you know, I'll have an Amy B shirt on or I'll have one of my Amy B bags with me or I'll send the kids to school with stuff. And so just kind of like subtle branding throughout the community when you when you hyper local it they see it a lot more in a smaller area versus if you're all over this city they're never going to start to see brand recognition oh excellent now and then um how is it it's like do you have an assistant or are you truly a solo agent without any any support how how does your 
How do you yeah, keep so, things kind of moving along? Yeah, I have created uh, some systems and some processes that I at some point packaged up. I have a whole listing process, um, an online course, and then a buyer process, an online course. And it's just a roadmap for how this works. And, and I only take clients that are willing to get on that roadmap and follow that with me. Anybody else, it's just not going to work for me. So I say no a lot, but um, I guide them through this process and the process saves me time. So I know exactly how many hours it's going to take me to sell a house from the time I get the lead to the time that we're under contract. It's like eight to 10 hours. Um, and it's very fine tuned. I have a, an automated email system and video system where I'm communicating with my clients as to what's, this is what's happening next. This is what's happening next. And I've had vendors that I've had some of them, I've, one of them, I, my inspector's been with me for 19 years, my lender for 13 years, my stager for 10 years. So we're used to working together and I've got a well-oiled machine so I can, you know, just work with a lot of people and because I've built my systems to make it easier on me. I do have a transaction coordinator that helps me with all of the paperwork and all of the compliance and everything like that. But other than that, um, I definitely cherry pick my buyers because they take the most time and I want to make sure that I'm not spending too much time there. Um, and then I list properties, um, preferred list properties and try to keep them as close to Anderson Township as possible. And I okay. refer a lot of business too, as a result, I referred already this year, it's March. I've already referred three buyers and been paid three referral fees to to my exp downline um here in cincinnati oh. well that's that's a nice uh nice added benefit so basically you're setting expectations up front and creating sort of tacit or at least a, a, a agreement on how this process is going to work by basically yep. saying hey you're if, if um somebody says hey i'm interested in buying a home you're 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 plugging them into that funnel and if they come out the other side with a understanding of the process and the shared agreements between the two of you, then you'll uh, take them on as a client. But if they don't take the course, and I guess they could say, I don't like to work that way, then you 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 say, okay, yeah. I can refer you to somebody or whatever. That it, they don't have to take the course. My clients don't have to take the course. Um, oh, okay. But over time, I've had a lot of agents reach out to me and say, how are you doing this? How are you getting these results? How are you doing this? So I created a course for agents to take so that they could do the same thing that I was doing. Okay. Okay. You have to I, enforce, excellent. like you said, set expectations and standards. You have to enforce them. And I think that's what a lot of agents aren't willing to do is enforce the rules with their clients so that they can mm -hmm. have a, a, a value that's fair on both sides. Right. Now um, you mentioned, um, you know, kind of how you organize uh, your clients. What CRM do you use or what's your process of, of, of managing your clientele? Okay, so you know the best CRM you have is, is one, the one you, you use. use. Yeah. So I have this in my hand a lot, my phone. Yep. And contacts, these are my contacts and they mm -hmm. all have little icons by them. Right. Emojis. This is my CRM. I have their phone number in there. I have their email in there. And I have um, a, a history of my text conversations in there with them. And from anywhere, if so I'm a mom, I'm a basketball, football, soccer, volleyball mom. I do a lot of practices. I do a lot of drop offs. I can sit in my car and I needed somebody, I needed some people in the community to attend the park board meeting last night that, that I'm on. And so I sorted everybody by the letter A. I have a little A icon in there. And then I looked up all my friends in Anderson Township and I quickly texted them and asked them to come to the meeting. Or if I have um, a listing coming and I need to contact some agents to see if they have any cash buyers, I click on the little house and then I have all my favorite agents pop up and I talk to them about the opportunity. So I have everything organized by emoji in my phone. Um, you know, my repeat referral, 
current clients, all of that. And that's just what I use. And I can quickly text people because that's the mode of communication that they tend to want these days. And then my history of conversation is all in that in that phone that I have all the time with me. Oh, awesome. Well, yeah, it is. It is the one CRM that everybody has. Uh, yeah, and a it's phone. free. Yeah. Yeah. Come, comes with comes with the phone package. So yeah. Um, so now um, you were, I think, uh, a couple different brands before EXP. Um, and, but you have obviously been with EXP since you mentioned uh, Fort Lauderdale. Um, what was it that attracted you to EXP over other brokerages and brands? Yeah, I mean, I had been with Keller Williams for nine years. I was doing training for them. I was on their um, agent leadership council, um, all, all of the things. There was nothing about uh, KW that I didn't like. I loved their training. I loved the way that they were teaching you to, you know, delegate and grow a team and all of that. And if it weren't for Hank Avink and and putting me in a headlock and saying, you have to watch this, you have to talk to me about this, I would have never even been looking. But I am so grateful for him for forcing this on me. And we are good friends, so it was okay, you know. Um, but I wish I would have done it sooner. And um, it's it's the, to me, I can sell real estate anywhere and be successful. I really can. Um, to me, it's the benefits of the stock, the ownership, the um, the revenue share is great. It's icing on the cake for me, but it's 100% better than what I was dealing with at um, KW for, as far as transparency goes. I love the transparency of the fees and you know the profit share and all of it. You see it all. It all makes sense. Um, and my husband, he's in it and, uh, he had been searching for something that was all online. He's like this, there has to be an online brokerage somewhere. And we never found it until Hank came and told us about it in 2017. So, um, it's been amazing. Um, I will share a quick story about the, just the real basic, everybody gets a stock for their first sale of the year, right? So the first sale of the mm -hmm. year at yep. EXP, you get a stock award. Well, that first sale that I did at EXP was a $200,000 condo. And I made $6,000 on that commission. Okay. Um, and I was awarded stock. And three years later, when that stock was vested, that stock that I got for that first sale was worth $20,000 way more than my commission on that deal yep. that I earned it for. And I cashed that out. I chose to cash that out and buy myself a pair of very large diamond earrings as a trophy that I've been wanting for a very long time. But the thing is, is that was just the first one. And I have not sold anything else since. It continues to grow. It continues to grow. I get get stock for capping. I get stock for bringing people to the company. I buy stock at a discount every single transaction. Um, the reason why I work is to send my kids to school without them having debt. And literally, I was trying to figure out how am I going to do that? How, am I, how many houses am I going to have to sell to do that, right? And EXP gives us the leverage of having the ownership in the stocks. And I have my college savings almost complete way in advance. They're not even going to college for six more years. Um, it has been just a tremendous relief to have not only the sales working for me and that commission income, but also the behind the scenes wealth building that EXP gives us to be able to do extra with what we're already doing anyway. So that was a game changer for me with EXP. Well, awesome. Well, no, that's, that's great. I mean, that was, the, that was the, uh, that was the idea. That was the science experiment that we thought might work. And sure enough, knock on wood, we've, uh, we've had so many, uh, so many people share amazing stories of how the, 
the equity side or the rev share side has been uh, a game changer when they when they needed it and uh, whether it's retiring a spouse or buying their parents their uh, a house or sending their kids to college or having the ability to um, maybe uh, not have to sell real estate for a few months because of something taking place in their life that was those were all the things that there wasn't a solution for before exp so i'm uh, super proud of that um last last question and then um let's go we'll go and wrap it up here today but uh if there was one piece of advice you could give to an exp agent what would that be um i don't know that it would be just limited to an exp agent it would probably be to everyone in our industry is to be professional, have um, set expectations with your clients, have standards and boundaries. Um, I think a lot of people feel like they should be walked over or work 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and that doesn't need to happen. Um, it, it, know your worth and, and share share your value. That's so important right now in this world that we're in with the, you know, the challenges that we're having legally and all of that is just be valuable and continue to invest in yourself so that you can show your value to your clients and, you know, set those standards so that you are valuable to them as well. Awesome. Yeah. The, the, the Jim Rohn quote, I just mentioned it a couple of days ago is don't wish for, for, for fewer challenges or fewer problems wish you were better or wish were, you were, you know, wish you could add more value and then, and then go do it and uh, yep. everything will work out. So. Awesome. Well, good stuff. So thank you. Uh, thank you, Amy, for, for jumping on um, and being part of this uh, podcast. Um, super, you know, excited that uh, you were here and uh, hopefully get to see you again later on yeah. in the year. Uh, and um, uh, how would people follow you? What's the best, um uh the, the best way for people to to connect with you if, if you're at exp workplace is a great way um facebook is an option and i i suppose twitter is an option too i mostly just focus on basketball there um but glenn i just wanted to say congratulations on all the accolades that you've received those are completely earned and deserved You've created an amazing company that so many people's lives have been changed as a result of. So thank you for having the vision and the guts and the intensity and the passion and the push to make it happen for all of us. I really, really, really appreciate you. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, Amy. And, and thank you uh, for, for being on. And again, thanks everyone for listening or watching this, uh, this episode of the Expansion Podcast. And uh, with that, I'm going to sign off. And Thanks again, Amy. Bye-bye.